Okay, hi folks. So we're back and we will be looking now at exponential random graph models in a little bit more detail and talking a little bit about estimating them. And so if you recall, we have the exponential form now where we're talking about the probability of a given network depending on some set of statistics multiplied by some weights. And the important idea here is that this allows us to capture different shapes that we might think are important in, in dictating whether a random graph or network forms. And so this is going to be a statistical model that then will allow us to test for different features of networks and find out whether features are significantly present or not in terms of did these really determine whether the network was formed or not. So the power of such models is that this is a very general formulation and it allows us to capture many different things. We can put in all kinds of different statistics. You can keep track of, of how many triangles are there uh, so we can capture clustering. It'll allow you to do average path lengths. It'll allow you to do all kinds of other statistics that you could think of and put in here. So it's very flexible and very general in its formulation. And also the exponential form is a nice one in terms of some of the mathematics behind it. The difficulty is going to be in estimating these things. And just a, uh, an example now. So we'll start with an example where you can estimate these things fairly easily, partly because it's a very small network. So we'll go back to our Florence example, the Florentine marriages, and, and in this case, business dealings. And that only has effectively 15 nodes that are actually connected. And so that will be a relatively small network. And I'll, I'll talk in detail about some of the estimation issues afterwards. So this is a paper by Robbins, Pattison, Coalition, and Lusher, 2007. And they're fitting an exponential random graph model to the data of Paget and Ansel. And looking in particular at the business ties between the 16 major families. And what they're going to do is, is look at how many links are present in the network, how many two stars are present in the network, how many three stars are present in the network. So links, it's easy. Two stars, that's going to be shapes that look like this. Three stars. And then, of course, triangles, triads, and clustering. So by checking whether or not a coefficient on one of these ends up being significant, we can tell where there, did triangles seem to influence the formation of this network, or do they just arise at random? Okay, so that's the idea. And so we can look at the form here. This is going to be probability of a graph is going to depend on these different counts of different statistics. Then there's a normalizing coefficient to make sure that this, these things are going to add up to be probabilities. So if we sum across all graphs, we get one. And what we're going to be doing then is looking at the estimates for these different coefficients that come out. And the algorithm here is going to be based on uh, looking at the network that was actually observed and then picking the coefficients to maximize this probability. So what's, what are the coefficients that make it, that maximize this probability that the actual graph that was observed um, would be observed? Okay, so that's just maximum likelihood estimation. So remember, this is what the network looks like. This is the business-only dealings in that network. So it's a sparser network. And in fact, there's a bunch of, of disconnected families in this particular situation. And if you go through, these are the estimates that they got in that paper. So what did they find? So Robbins and all found that links minus 4.27, standard error of 1.13. So we're more than three. Uh, standard deviations away, close to four standard deviations away. So this is statistically significant, negative. So what does it mean? When, when you have a negative coefficient here, it means that it, the model likes to have fewer links rather than more links. So it does, it's pushing towards having a sparser network rather than a completely connected network. So if you ran this up to be a very high positive number, then that would be putting more weight on networks. So probabilities would be increasing if you had more and more links. So it would tend to push you towards fully connected networks. If you have a negative number, then that makes it more likely that you're going to see fewer links and indeed, this was a relatively sparse network, and so the negative here represents that. Uh, when you look at these other coefficients here, they're not significant, right? So these are, are one and a half, 
standard deviations or so. Um, so it's, it's not obvious that the two stars and three stars are appearing except by random. And also these things, one thing we have to be a little worried about is these things are, are quite collinear and are going to be generated in, in combination. So the fact that there's a plus one on one and a minus on the other means it's the program's having a little bit of difficulty possibly sorting these things out. So that's uh, not, not necessarily going to be easy to estimate. And then in terms of triads, we end up with uh, statistically significant 1.32, so twice the standard error here. And that's positive, so it's favoring networks that have more triads than would arise uh, at random. And so here, what that does give us an indication of is now we can test for whether it appears that these triangles are appearing uh, other than, than links just forming by families forming business dealings at random. So there's something going on in terms of tri triads, and there's, we can actually have some theory for that that, that uh, we'll talk about later in the course, where it's possible that having uh, business dealings with other families that are connected to the families you're dealing with helps you get leverage and make sure that people will, will actually behave. So this is consistent with that kind of theory. Okay, so, so this gives us some of the idea of the power of exponential random graph models and why we might be using them. We can test for whether certain shapes are, are influencing and important in the network formation process. What's going to be the difficulty of doing this more generally? Well, when we go beyond 15, 16 nodes, when we're looking at this probability, in order to have this be a probability and, and maximize this likelihood, we are summing in the denominator across all possible graphs. Right? And so, in general, the reason that this became possible was people started to say, okay, the way in which we're going to go through and implicitly estimate the denominator is by doing a search across possible networks. And we'll march over these. It's impossible to sum over all of them, given the sheer number of them. So we'll, we'll end up using what's known as Markov chain, uh, Mark, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods, uh, where we randomly go from, from network to network, evaluate this, and we'll do that over some random search through the set of possible networks, and hopefully that search ends up being representative of the denominator and gives us a rough estimate of what that denominator would be. Okay, and so, so techniques by Tom Snyders, Mark Hancock, and so forth have been very important in, in making this work and have led to these kinds of, of uh, analyses becoming a standard. Okay, so the, the challenge here is the fact that w even with just 30 nodes, so if we bump our marriage example up to say 30 families instead of uh, 15, 16, we're going to end up with, remember, um, 2 to the 435th possible networks, and again there were less than 200 to the 258 atoms in the universe. There's no possible way that we're going to be able to, to sum over this. And in fact, the difficulty is that even if we take a sample, so suppose we sample 10,000 of these, or 100,000, or a million of these, um, a million is, is a a minute fraction of the, the possible set. And unless we know somehow that those million are capturing all the possible different shapes that could be out there, um, then we have no idea whether or not we're getting a representative pick at, at this uh, picture of the denominator. Okay, so sampling will not lead to accurate estimates. And, and that's a, a, an issue that's been pointed out in a series of papers recently. So there's a paper by uh, Bamidi, Bressler, and Sly in 2008. There's also some work by Chatterjee and Daikonis and others. And the, the Bamidi result is actually quite impressive. What it does is it shows that if you're looking at exponential random graph models, and in their case they look at dense enough ones, if you look at a class of these models, it shows that the MCMC MC techniques for, for actually trying to sample different possible networks to figure out what these relative probabilities are using Glober dynamics or Gibbs sampling, variations on Metropolis Hastings, if you know what those are. Uh, when you look at those kinds of techniques, they will only end up converging to give you an accurate estimate. So they will mix in less than exponential time only if the networks are approximately independent. So the situations in which marching randomly through this space of, of networks is actually going to give you a good picture of what's going on is a case where the links were actually formed independently at random, and now we're back into a world that we could estimate just by using straight analyses on the node-by-node the node level as opposed to actually looking at the network itself. 
So ergoms that are interesting, the ones where other kinds of things are present and links aren't approximately independent, those are the reasons we're looking at ergoms. Those can't be estimated via these techniques, uh, in, at least in a class of dense ones. And actually, there's going to be some problems even on sparse ones. So part of the difficulty here is, is actually getting an estimate for these things is going to be tricky. And there's some theorems showing that the techniques that are being used in terms of actually marching through this space are going to be problematic in, in a non-trivial set of cases. And generally, it's going to be difficult to, to use those techniques in estimating. So uh, let's take a look just to see how this, what, what some of the issues are. Let's just take a look at a quick example. And here, what we're doing is, is looking at the probability of a network as a function, say, of just links and triangles. So those were the ones that came out to be important in our, uh, oh, sorry, do one in terms of links and isolates. So here, we're going to even do a simpler model. So what, what nature does is it looks at a network, and it, instead of just putting down links at random, it also, there are some individuals, for whatever reason, are asocial or hermits. So there's some people who just don't connect to society. And so uh, we'll allow for a model where nature has some people who are just asocial, pick some people who are asocial, and then the rest of the, of the network is formed more or less uniformly at random. So links matter, and there'll be some extra uh, possibilities that, that nature favors or disfavors networks that have more or fewer isolates. Okay. So here we're keeping track of how many isolated nodes there are, how many links, and then the model is expressed in this simple form. So now we, again, have to, to go through. Um, the, the program is going to have to, in order to figure out, to maximize the likelihood of this probability coming out, it has to know for each betas what this whole expression looks like. So it's going to have to estimate what the sum looks like in the, in the bottom. And again, uh, it's going to have to search through that space in some way. So what we're going to do is we're going to we fix 30 nodes. Uh, we're going to actually look at a particular network. Let's just throw a network at the program and see what happens. So in particular, we'll isolate 10 of them. So a third of the nodes will be isolated. Two-thirds will, will not be isolated. And then we'll put down uh, a third of the links possible on the remaining 20 nodes. That's way above the connection threshold. So 65 out of the remaining 190 links, all those other 20 nodes will end up being connected. Um, and so we've got a, a, a network where 10 of the nodes chose not to be connected. The remaining 20 nodes, we have 65 out of 190 <clears throat> links. So if you want to figure out what these betas look like, in this case, the betas, if you recall, when we've tried to fit in our ex, uh, erdos renyi random networks into this setting, the betas work out to be equal to the log of the probability of something happening compared to 1 minus p. So in terms of links, that's going to be 0 0.3, uh, 3, 4 compared to 1 minus 0.34, and, and also for isolates. So in fact, you can prove that in this particular model, the betas are going to come out to be about minus 0 0.69 uh, in that vicinity in each one of these cases. And so, or yeah, minus 0 0.65, 0 0.69 in, in that range. So here's what we, uh, you get if you run, say, StatNet, which you can download um, for free and actually we'll use in, in our, uh, one of our exercises. Um, here, using uh, 10,000 MCMC runs, so it's going through about 10,000 different iterations in searching through the space of, of possible networks to estimate the denominator. And so here, what we're doing is throwing the same network at the program and just having it re-estimate it a bunch of different times. And for links, it's, it's not doing terribly poorly. So the actual estimate is somewhere between minus 0.6 and minus 0.7. It's ending up uh, on the high side too much. Occasionally, it gets stuck way down here at minus 1.2. Um, but it's giving us, it's, it's figuring out that it's negative. And uh, so, so that's not terrible. But let's look at what happens when, on the isolates case. On the isolates, the um, isolate number is also uh, minus 0.69 in this case. When we look at, so minus 0.69 was the 10 over 30. The minus 0.65 comes from looking at the 65 over the 190 um, adjustment. So here, when you look at these, 
when you look at the histogram of the 25 different estimates that the program gets, it, and the reason it gives you a different estimate is each time it's doing a different random search through different possible denominators, right? So it's doing 10,000 different samples. And so we think, oh, maybe 10,000 is enough. Well, here it did 25 different tries of the 10,000, and this is what it comes up with. Sometimes it's estimating this beta to be 25. Sometimes it's estimating it to be 65. Sometimes it's estimating it to be 5. Sometimes negative 15. So it's all over the place and uh, not coming out anywhere near the right vicinity. And in fact, when it spits out and tells you what it thinks the standard error is, in each one of these cases, it actually tells you that the standard error is close to zero. So it tells you it thinks it's a very accurate estimate. Um, so it'll tell you it's 65 plus or minus zero. It'll tell you it's 25 plus or minus zero. And so what's happening is the program is getting stuck and having a difficult time estimating a denominator and thinking it's getting a very good accu accurate estimate, even though it's all over the place and quite far away from the true parameter. So this is a difficulty, and uh, there are ways around this, and the ways around this uh, will be that what we can do in general, we, you know, how do we uh, compute these parameters? Um, how, how are we going to, are, are we sure that the estimates should be accurate? You know, so do, can we say something about how many observations you need to get accurate estimates? Uh, how many nodes are needed? What, what kinds of models will this work for? What kinds of models won't it work for? So there's a lot missing from the literature in terms of this. And uh, you know, we might also be interested in using these models to generate networks to try and, you know, so once we estimate the model, suppose we have betas, we might want to be able to draw networks from this and begin to do policy tests on it. So what would happen if we, if we tried to eradicate isolate nodes how much effort would we have to put in there to, to adjust things, what would happen to the networks if we did, and so forth. So there's a whole series of questions we can ask. And in order to do this, what we'd have to do is, is change the way we look at these things. So one possibility is instead of searching in the network space, we can actually estimate these things and work directly in a statistics space. So just think about the number of triangles. So instead of thinking of graphs, just think about nature generating triangles, generating links, and count in terms of link and triangle space that actually tends to reduce the dimensionality dramatically. And so we'll actually talk about that in the, in the next uh, lecture. So what we've got here is a very powerful and important class of uh, models. Estimation is still an issue and, and not quite well understood. There'll be ways to look at variations on these things which we can estimate and, and we'll talk about that next.